Heavenly Father, we beseech thee. I kneel before you as a member of this age-old craft, praying to you for guidance as I am on a journey. A journey for more light, but more especially light that has been lost, forgotten, or hidden among the ages gone by. The light that connects us with our very meaning and informs us of our purpose. Light locked deep within our past, beyond lips that no longer speak, and paths forgotten, no longer traveled. Aid me in my pursuit, Lord, for historical light. Hey everybody, welcome back to Historical Light, an independent Masonic show focused on the historical events and aspects within Freemasonry. As always, I'm your host, Brother Alex Powers, and I want to thank you for joining us once again. Today is episode number 12. Now, our show is brought to you in part by our sponsor, Masonic Revival. If you haven't checked them out, as I always say, please do so today, right after the show, at MasonicRevival.com. Uh, check out their website. You'll find everything from lapel pins, neckties, bow ties, and so much more. Really great quality products, really unique, and I think you'll really love them. Uh, definitely use our promo code while you're there. That is all caps, one word, H light. I'm going to say it again, H light, and you will get free shipping on your entire order. So you really have no excuse. It's great stuff, a great deal. Check them out today right after the show and uh, get, some, uh, get some products in so you look really good at your next Masonic meeting or event. Um, show is also brought to you by viewers like you. Uh, if you do enjoy what we're doing here and want to see us continue and grow, you yourself can support what we do here and help keep the lights on. Uh, you can do that on our website up in the Support Us tab securely through PayPal. We do appreciate everything you're willing to offer. Now, as we always do, we'll start off the show by jumping over to our friends at Masonry Today and see just what happened in Masonic history today. Today in Masonic history, George Michael Cohen is born in 1878. George Cohen was an American entertainer, playwright, composer, lyricist, actor, singer, dancer, and producer. Wow. Cohen was born in Providence, Rhode Island. And although there's a birth certificate listing his birthday as July 3rd of 1878, his family would actually claim he was born on the 4th of July. This is in part probably due to the numerous patriotic songs that he would later write. Cohen first appeared on stage as an infant, essentially as a prop for his parents' Vanderbilt act. As he grew, he would begin uh, performing acts of his own and would eventually join his family's act as part of the Four Cohens, made up by his mother, father, sister, and himself. He would write over 150 songs and skits for the family act. The act would travel together until 1901. During this time, Cohen would develop his famous curtain speech, My mother thanks you, my father thanks you, my sister thanks you, and I thank you. In 1904, Cohen would begin a 16-year stretch of writing, directing, and producing on Broadway. His first was The Governor's Son, which was written by the four Coens. During this time on Broadway, Cohen would write close to 300 songs. Some of the more famous ones that he's known for is Harrigan, my Give My Regards to Broadway, sorry, You're a Grand Old Flag, and the Yankee Doodle Boy, also known as I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Like Cohen himself, the singer of the song claims to be born on the 4th of July. During World War I, Cohen would write one of his more famous songs over there, the song was meant to galvanize young men who were heading to the battlefields of Europe. The song reflected the feeling at the time that the war was believed to be short-lived. It would also be very popular during World War II. Cohen would spend his later years in life as an actor, appearing in films and on Broadway. In 1942, the musical biopic about Cohen, Yankee Doodle Dandy, was released. Unfortunately, at the time, Cohen was ill and a uh, private screening was actually arranged for him to view it. After watching James Cagney portray him on the screen, Cohen would say, my God, what an act to follow. Cohen would pass away on November 5th of 1942 from abdominal cancer at the age of 64. 
Cohen was a member of Pacific Lodge number 233 in New York City, New York. All right, thank you to our friends over at masonrytoday.com for another great article. Definitely check them out, as always, on their website and social media so you can keep up with them and the great daily posts they put out on Masonic history. I want to thank you guys for what you do and keep it up. So there's actually not an interview for today's episode. Uh, It's been pretty busy lately, and I've had to put a lot of work into other aspects and a couple speaking events that I have coming up as well. So with the holiday and everything coming up, I did not get enough time in this weekend um, to allow for the amount of editing it takes on the interview to include it into the episode. So we're going to hold that off until the next episode, but I still did want to stop in, say hello to you guys, connect with you. Definitely say happy 4th of July. It's coming tomorrow. I know you guys are going to have some amazing and celebrations i hope you guys will uh you know post your pictures let me know what you guys are doing how it's going i hope it's amazing definitely stay safe and enjoy yourselves uh, but besides that we've had a lot of other stuff going on recently one huge thing that just went down recently was the uh, 300 anniversary of the premier grand lodge of england um, tmr the Masonic Roundtable actually held a pretty epic event for that. I unfortunately was not able to make it out there. Uh, as you guys know, I made it out to Masonic Con just a little while ago and wasn't able to swing two East Coast trips coming from Kansas. That gets a little pricey, so wasn't able to swing two trips in the same summer. Um, but it looked like it was a really epic event. I was keeping up with the pictures that were getting posted and a couple of live Facebook uh, feeds that were going on. So looked like everybody really enjoyed it, but I want to hear from you guys. Were you there? Were you able to make it? And what did you think of the event? Um, I know they had speakers and just kind of the whole nine yards. So from what I've heard, it was the biggest 300 celebration within the United States at least. So let me know what you guys thought. If you were there, I'd like to see your guys' pictures and what you thought of the event. So definitely uh, throw those in the uh, Facebook group or something and we'll uh, continue the chat on that there. Now, also, uh, we also had St. John's Day um, around the same time. We celebrated that at my lodge by attending a church service together. Uh, so the whole lodge met at local church and attended service together. Service was great. They, uh, you know, obviously accepted us in um, very nicely. Uh, had a write-up on the Masonic Lodge in their, uh, in their daily news article they put out. And uh, it was really great. It was a great experience to be able to, uh, you know, worship with the brethren. And then uh, we followed that up by having a uh, lodge picnic out of our uh, secretary's farm. Uh, He's got a numerous amount of acres, beautiful property, and uh, he's grilled up some amazing food. We all kind of brought some sides and made it kind of a potluck deal. But it was a really cool experience, you know, to get together outside of lodge, get the families involved and everything, and just be able to sit back and kind of chill out and have those really cool conversations that, you know, just usually don't come up. So it was a great time. I really enjoyed it. And also want to know what you guys did. How What kind of celebrations did you guys plan for your lodge? I know I saw on a Facebook group that there was a lot of table lodges going on. Uh, those are awesome, and I'd like to see uh, uh, see some pictures from those and how that went for you guys. Um, also want to touch on there is a really cool relic here in the Kansas City area from St. John, and that is actually St. John's finger that you can found, uh, find at the Nelson Atkins museum here in Kansas City or Kansas City, Missouri on the Missouri side uh, but it's really cool you know I actually unfortunately never even knew it was there uh, my family had went and visited the museum went through the whole place getting pictures all over and uh, we stopped by my in-laws afterwards and my father-in-law just came out he's like did you see the finger what what are you talking about and I'm looking through the pictures and sure enough four feet behind me is the urn that the uh well i don't know if it's really an urn trine temple whatever it's this big gaudy golden thing and there's a there's a glass kind of window up at the top and the uh the finger is actually still displayed in there it's it's all black at this point uh but you can still you know totally make out the finger the fingernail it's kind of creepy but knowing what it is being from saint john the baptist that's pretty powerful to be in the presence of it and it's It's amazing how, you know, myself and so many other people walk right by it on a daily basis and have no idea that it's there. I mean, no one really looks close enough to see that there's a finger inside there. It's this big, amazing, you know, gold metallic deal that, you know, just looks like a piece of art itself. So people see that, maybe take a picture of it and continue their way never really look inside uh, to see what's housed in there. I mean, the piece itself, like I said, looks like the art. 
unless you really get up on it and uh, you know examine it closely, you really never know that finger is in there. I don't really know uh, you know the specifics on how they keep the finger preserved. It is, I mean, besides the discoloration, extremely well preserved. I mean, you can fully make out the finger, the fingernail, and it's it's, it's all there. Um, but there is there's a lot of history behind it. From what I've heard, there's another part um, in a church or museum. And I'm not sure exactly where, maybe Italy or something like that. Uh, so the rumor I heard was, you know, back in the day is his body was dismembered um, and, you know, people were like taking body parts as holy relics and hiding them in their houses. And uh, those kind of got confiscated back over time. They'd get found by the soldiers and whatnot. And to my knowledge, two parts remain to this day. I'm not sure what it is. Some part of the arm is in a museum or a, a church somewhere. I, I want to say in Italy. Can't don't hold me to that. Um, but then the finger ended up in Nelson Atkin Museum here in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, so it's crazy, crazy stuff there. But uh, it's also a really weird and cool part of history. So definitely check it out if you can. I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those bucket list items. Why not go check it out and. Uh, be able to say you did <laughs> but anyways with that said today is a short episode uh, like I said there is no interview unfortunately I do want to apologize for that just you know still working on that 24 gauge 24 inch gauge I should say uh, too much going on I wasn't able to fit in the editing time necessary but I did want to stop in and say hello to you guys and connect wish you all a happy and safe 4th of July uh, definitely reach out shoot uh, shoot some pictures of your guys celebration and what you guys got going on and if you are in the area Topeka Kansas I got a couple speaking events coming up I'm actually gonna be at Topeka Lodge number 17 tomorrow night um, speaking there uh, that is a regular lodge meeting so everyone is you know if you're regular Mason you are invited uh, welcome to come. I'm also doing a speaking engagement uh, for the Midwest Conference on Masonic Education. That's going to be August 19th. There is tickets for that one, and I don't have the details exactly on how to get a hold of those or what all that entails, price and all. Uh, from what I've been told, the ticket does cover uh, lunch and dinner, uh, but beyond that, I really don't have the details at this time. So you just have to keep an ear open, and uh, that information will come soon, I'm sure. Uh, but I will be speaking there as well. Both of those events are in Topeka, Kansas, and I've got some other ones lined up that I'll get you guys information on as that gets uh, panned out. But until then, um, definitely uh, meet us over at the Facebook group. That's the Historical Light Masonic Research Group on Facebook. If you're not a member there, go right now, go click join, and uh, we'll get you in there so you can get on the conversation. So everyone go meet us over at the Facebook group, and we will continue the conversation there. So until the next time, when we continue our quest for historical lights, I want to wish you all a very happy 4th of July. Take care.